Good morning, <laughs> it's Keith. I hope you all had a good weekend. Um, I've just thought I've been looking at some of the comms and what people are talking about over the weekend on some of the support sites. And I thought I would just list together a few general comments that I'm reading. And I thought I'd just do some cover some do's and don'ts. Um, most of them are pretty obvious to most of you. So uh, it, it is just a generic, just a general, especially for people who are new to SunSync. You know, always, and these are the do's, you know, always install the inverters in a well-ventilated area. Make sure it's it's not, you know, one guy in Hong Kong um, actually put an in, inverter in a black container and inside the container it was reaching over 100 degrees and wondered why the IGBTs failed. Of course, it was so flaming hot. Always check your supply voltage. Make sure you look at your, your source of supply voltage is good. You've got good grounding. Make sure the grounding is good. Make sure your neutral is good. Look at your upper and lower limits. Make sure that you do the settings correctly on the inverter for your upper and lower limits. In some parts of the world, if you're using a swell line, then you, you might be a little bit erratic on the upper and lower limits. Uh, if you're in a micro um, grid, then you look at your frequency. Check your timer. If you're going to, because obviously you're going to use real time operation, check your clock is set to the correct time. I tell you, the amount of people forget to set the clock correctly. Make sure the unit is switched on. So many people think, oh, it's on, but it's not. You've got to press the button. Just a reminder, always ensure it's switched on because it will light up, but the inverter itself will not be running until you switch the button on. But the whole lot will appear to, to work. So that's very important. Check your battery current. Check your charging current for your battery. You know, that is very, very important. Also, check and I tell everybody, you must make sure that you've got good communication on your battery. If you haven't got good battery comms, you're in trouble because nothing will function correctly. You must always make sure the communication, if you're using a lithium battery and it's got comms, you must make sure the comms are working. If it doesn't work, your paralleling won't work, you'll get F56 error, you'll get loads of errors coming up, all because of the communication of the battery. First thing, always check that the battery is communicating. If you're paralleling inverters, make sure that you're doing it correctly with the cable. Don't just bung them together. We've seen people just connecting the inverter together and hope they'll work together. It won't, you can damage the inverter and blow it up. If you're on a three-phase configuration, make sure you, you've got a tr your true master. Your true master is Modbus 1, is the start of your rotation. So make sure Modbus 1 is at the start of the rotation. It's very important. If you need, if you need to charge your batteries from an AC or a generator, you must program the inverter to do this. It will not do it automatically. You can't just connect a generator and say, oh, it's not charging my batteries. You have to tell it to charge the batteries. You have to set the limits it can charge the batteries. You have to tick several boxes. You have to say, I'm using the auxiliary as a generator port. I'm gonna set my upper and lower limits. I've done videos about, about using generators. It's very important to set all of this. And also time of use. Always, if you're using a real timer, you've got your clock set correctly, it will come on and you, you tell it what level to charge it, what level to stop the generator. And as I've shown in a previous video, the signal stops. It's very, very important. A couple of don'ts, and I'll just keep it short because I'm probably boring everybody. On your VOC, our inverters, for example, on the 3.3, um, the 5.5 3 .3, the and the 8, uh, have a, a maximum MPPT of 500 volt. Try to keep the VOC of your of your uh, solar array below 450. The reason for that is, and I know it doesn't affect everybody, but certainly in the UK, and I've seen some of the weather in Joburg, and they're certainly going to get affected. If the weather gets cooler and you've still got bright sunshine, then the panels will produce more energy. The voltages will go up for sure. So you need a little bit of play with. So the absolute limit of our inverter is 500. It will maybe go to 510. If you go more than that, you will damage the DC to DC converter on the MPPT. So always try to keep that below. Four, 450 is a good barometer. Never ever parallel the MPPTs. You can't join them together. The sheer fact that maximum peak power tra uh, tracker um, basically, they are independent trackers. You can't join them together. Absolutely can never join them together. You can't common either wire. So neither wire can common. Both need to be kept completely separate so you can never connect it. Never run the inverters without protection equipment. Make sure you've got the correct fuses. Make sure you've got the RCDs, air leakage circuit breaker, residual current device, whatever you want to call it. Make sure, you know, 
often on the input there's arguments people say well on the input you don't need it actually in under the uk wiring regs and aussie wiring regs and many of the wiring regs globally you do actually need an rcd on the input because it's coming from mains and if there's a fault you don't want the thing becoming live and not getting protection so the ac grid connection does actually need an rcd um on the output is a little bit subjective but people tend to do the um, earth uh, neutral bonding so an rcd can actually work but what i'm saying is according to the local wiring regulations please make sure that you've got the correct protection equipment never run the inverter without a grounding make sure it's grounded on the chassis a good grounding absolutely safety first another thing is you can never run the inverter without a ct coil Never attempt to use it without a CT coil. People think, oh, well, I can just use it with it. You can't. The CT, the inverter relies totally on the external CT coil. It's so important. It's part of the integral communication system of it because this is the current limiter. Even if you're using a generator, you must put the CT coil. It, you, if, okay, if you're using a generator on the gen input, it's not so important. But if you're using on the gen input on the grid side, you must put the CT coil. Otherwise, the, gener the, the inverter can export energy into the, gener into the generator. And that's not very good. Um, because then you end of your generator, you blow your generator up. You've got to be so careful. You must have a CT coil. Um, People often think they can run to the mains. You can't because you say, oh, we're going to limit it. The whole limiting section of the inverter will not function without that CT coil. So anyway, that's it. Uh, it was just a very short video. So sort of do's and don'ts. These are things that I've seen. I'll try and do another one, you know, what I see. Um, one of the things I'm trying to mention is if anybody's got a particular query or want me to demonstrate something on um, to do a video on programming and let me know um, and I can do a couple more. I'm, I'm hoping to do some training this week but if you've got some particular question you want me to demonstrate how to program a particular thing like I did with the generator and then we can set it up with the equipment and we can show it working we can cycle things very quickly and at least then maybe get a better understanding because generally the, the equipment works, the, the inverters work. We, you know, the, the, there are very, occasionally do get minor bugs, but we, we always try and improve the software, improve and improve. But any suggestions, please welcome. We are totally, t yeah, I'll talk to anybody. I'm, I'm an electrical engineer, I'm not, nothing other than that. So I'm, I'm interested in, and I, I love the kit. I absolutely love it. So please, any questions, just feel free to, to bang it. Sometimes on particular sites and people ask me questions about sites, I am a bit slow to react, just pure sheer volume. And we've got a good support team to do that as well. So I'll try and help where I can. Uh, but sometimes it's a little bit difficult. So anyway, I'll try and do some more videos this week. Uh, thanks for watching. Cheers. Have a great week.